to uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 20. And Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. And while you're turning there, I'm getting a lot of echo here. Am I echoing? These, um, I appreciate that, Jay. There was a pastor, and uh, one of his members of his congregation, they was parked along a busy highway, and they were both holding up a sign saying, the end is near. Uh, well, there, a motorist came along and stopped and began ranting and raving and saying, oh, you Christians, you've been saying that for years. You've been trying to uh, strike fear into people's hearts and so forth, intimidate them and so forth. He said, we don't need that kind of garbage. And he stepped on it. He floorboarded the car and took off. He went around the next bend, and sure enough, they heard a horrendous crash. The pastor looks at his uh, member of his church, and he says, you know what? He said, maybe we should have held up that other sign saying the bridge is out up ahead. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. If you have that, you can say amen. amen. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Father, again, we do thank you, Lord, uh, for the service, Heavenly Father, here today. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for your presence at which we could feel that you're here in the midst today. We're thankful, Lord, that you graced us, Lord, with your presence. And pray the Lord again that you just move, Heavenly Father, go down every aisle and every pew between every heart, that you'd have your way, Heavenly Father. And as we yield ourselves unto thee, work a work through us, Lord, here today. Give us the words that you'd have us to say, not one word too many and not one word too less. Pray the Lord that you would. It's your presence, Heavenly Father. Someone here today doesn't know Jesus. We pray that the day would be the day that they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We pray that, Lord, they too, they too, their heart can burn with the fire of God. We pray as well, the Lord, for the church. Pray for these, that, Lord, and we, these that might have gotten cold in their walk with thee are a little bit indifferent. We pray that, Heavenly Father, may your presence stir them afresh and anew. <laughs> God, may they go away, Heavenly Father, burning bright and for you and for your glory. We ask you, Lord, to help us today, work a work through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah said then, again, I'm going to repeat this first. Then he said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Amen. Jeremiah, the prophet of God in the Old Testament, had the call of God upon his life. He was to deliver the word of God. His call was he was to deliver it not just locally, but he was also delivered at nationality and to preach to the nations. The Bible says in there in Jeremiah chapter 1 that Jeremiah, the young man, even before... Uh, God ever formed him. He said, before I ever formed you, Jeremiah, in your mother's womb, I knew you. Isn't it something how God's already got a plan up over mine in your life? Even before your mother and father ever existed, before you ever got together, before he ever opened up their womb and allowed the life to be conceived within them in your mother's womb, before any of these things, before there was ever a bleep upon a monitor, any of these things, Almighty God, the God who sits in heaven, sits real high and looks real low, has a plan up over over mine in your life. And I know contrary to what some folks might even say or speak to you down here that some of you say sometimes, you know what? God doesn't have anything for you. You're a misfit. You're a reject. You're not going to amount to anything. You're a piece of trash and so forth. But God doesn't make trash, does he? God's not have accidents. God is a God that's made me and you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by Almighty God. And 
God, while he was working, he formed Jeremiah in his mother's womb. The God that which, which we serve was in his mind and he created him in his mother's womb. He gave him the color of his eyes. He gave them the color of his hair. He gave them these things. You are what you are by almighty God today. <laughs> Yet Jeremiah, at a young age, God already had a purpose and a plan said, Jeremiah, you're going to preach to the nations. And he said, I want you to preach the word of God and preach what thus saith the Lord. Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of the persecution or ridicule. He said, but preach on the authority of the word of God. And Jeremiah began to grow. And here in this Bible, within this chapter here, Jeremiah looked around within his time frame and he saw people that had turned away from God. He saw great immorality he saw much wickedness within the land and can I say you know what and what much of those Bible times still looks like today's times to me because there's much wickedness going on and much immorality taking place and we have gotten far away from God but if there ever was a day and a time Esther that you need to come forth and you need to stand today in the ministry and declare the word of God it's the day and age in which we live. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Expect the persecution. Jeremiah said here in these verses that such was the ridicule, such was he mocked and made fun of. Now we as quite don't have as much as what some of the foreign countries do, but can I tell you, it's getting worse all the time. Amen, it's certainly not getting better, but it's getting worse and worse. We're in a battle, in a spiritual battle against good versus evil, amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. It's still a God thing. Church, we've got to have God if we're ever going to change things. I thank God that Mr. Trump may have a little bit more uh, morals and so forth and morals, but you know what it takes. I believe all you in this church knows it still takes God to bring about change, to bring about a revival in America today. Woo! Woo! He can fire every one of them up there in the White House and change every seat you want to and change things around. But real change only comes in the heart of man when people receive Jesus Christ and get born again. Woo! Woo! Hey, glory. Jeremiah started dealing with all the ridicule and people began to mock him and persecute him. And church, we're dealing with that more today. Oh, you Christians, much like the little humorous joke that I told, but many people are saying the same thing today. There's nothing happened and there's nothing ever going to. Oh, what a devil's lie that is. I'm telling you, things are changing and changing very quickly. If it ever was, we need to be looking and looking and being ready for the coming of the Lord. You might as well expect persecution. Oh, you, you Jesus lover, you. you. You Jesus freak. I thank God, don't you? Thank God for that. Somebody. Jesus said, blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. If someone's making fun of you for being a Christian, you ought to go away saying, 